Hi, I'm Kent Zeitz. Today I'd like to talk to you about carbon monoxide detectors or carbon monoxide alarms. The state of Colorado requires that all single and multifamily dwellings offered for sale or transfer have an operational carbon monoxide detector or alarm installed if the dwelling has a fuel burning heater or appliance, a fireplace, or an attached garage. And they also require that these operational carbon monoxide detectors must be installed within 15 feet of each bedroom. My question is, why wouldn't you have a carbon monoxide detector? Carbon monoxide is a deadly, colorless, odorless, poisonous gas. It's undetectable to the human senses. And if you're exposed to low or moderate carbon monoxide um, quantities, you end up with symptoms similar to the flu. You get a headache, fatigue, shortness of breath, nausea, and dizziness. Now, if you're exposed to much higher levels of carbon monoxide, it can result in mental confusion, vomiting, loss of muscular coordination, loss of consciousness, and ultimately death. So carbon monoxide comes from incomplete burning of uh, fossil fuels, such as gas, coal, wood, propane, uh, sources include things like range ovens, uh, dryers, furnaces, your fireplace, grills, water heaters, uh, and the most common source is your vehicle, your gasoline engine. So, let's talk about things you should do to protect yourself from carbon monoxide. Um, one thing, probably because the most common cause of carbon monoxide poisoning is gasoline engine of your car. So never leave your car running in your garage even if the garage door is open. Never operate a portable generator or other gasoline powered device in an enclosed space. And never use things like portable uh, camping stoves or such or burn charcoal in an enclosed space. And also never alter the venting or the combustion air supply to your furnace or gas appliance. I'll show you some uh, examples of the venting and things you want to leave open to protect yourself. In this particular house, the builder installed a high and also you'll see a low makeup air duct. This is outside air coming in. The tendency is to want to plug these up with a rag or something when you feel that cold air coming in, but you don't want to do that. This is the makeup air for your gas appliance. Carbon monoxide is slightly lighter than air, and so it mixes with the warm air, the rising air in your home. Uh, the best place to place a detector for a family would be about five feet up on a wall, but they can be placed in many locations. You can go on the ceiling, they can plug into outlets. There's multiple types of carbon monoxide detectors. There's hardwired, which if you do have that, you want to have a battery backup. There's plug-in types, which once again, you want to have a battery backup. And of course, there's battery-operated carbon monoxide detectors. You should have one on each level of your home. Another thing is, remember that the average lifespan of a carbon monoxide detector is only is usually only equal to the warranty. The majority of them are only good for two years. The button on the carbon monoxide detector alarm lets you know the alarm is working, but it doesn't necessarily show that the carbon monoxide detector itself is working. This particular detector has a little display in it and it will tell me when it needs to be replaced. Some of them will go up to four years, but I say the average is two years and then you need to replace them. The alarm, which is on these detectors, is strictly the button is to test the um, alarm itself. It does not tell you if the carbon monoxide detector is functioning, just detecting the detector itself is working. So you need to read the manufacturer's warranty, see what the lifespan is, and act accordingly. One of the things I'm going to talk about is your hot water heater. With your hot water heater, and it has a little cap sitting on top of the tank with a space between where the flue goes up through the ceiling and a space between the tank and the flue. The only thing that takes those exa exhaust, that carbon monoxide, your flue gases up that flue is the heat in that gas. And the amount of pressure it takes to take those up there is similar to about five to seven pascals. These are six sticky notes sitting here on the back of my hand. If you do that and feel the pressure, that is roughly five pascals. 
So it takes very little to reverse that flow. Things that can do that would be wind, uh, hitting your home, can cause the gases to be forced back down the fluid into your house. Another cause would be if you have a lot of fans or large fans, say a kitchen hood fan, can draw that gas down the flu and into your house. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimate that several thousand people go to hospital emergency rooms every year to be treated for carbon monoxide poisoning. And those are the lucky ones. So be sure to get a carbon monoxide detector. They're inexpensive and it's a safety you need. As you see today, it's snowed out, our furnace is running, it'd be nice to have a fire in the fireplace, but those are all sources of carbon monoxide. Thank you.